Today's video, we've got Drini versus Gabigol. This is one of the more underrated videos uh, or underrated games of the Madden Bowl. So super, super excited to break this down for us today. And I hope you're enjoying these breakdowns. I feel like these breakdowns really help. Uh, the film study helps me with just understanding the game. Hopefully it helps you understand what players are seeing and doing. Um, and again, this just helps because if you can understand the meta and understand why the meta is the meta, why it works, what you can learn from that is, then you can cross apply this into whatever offense or defense that you're running. So um, coming into this game, in my opinion, you have kind of a clash of styles. Uh, Gabigol is probably, in my opinion, one of the most systematic players in Madden. It's why he's one of the players that I like to learn from the most because he breaks the game down in a very systematic approach that is helpful to learn from. Drini, in my opinion, is not that way at all. He is uh, different. He's opposite to a degree. I think Drini is one of the best freestyle players and specifically adjusters um, and adapters, plays really good defense. And uh, he, he, he always kind of finds a way to win. He's, a, he's just a winner through and through. And so I like studying him for that reason as well. He's really good at clock management. He's really good at managing the game. He's really good at not beating himself. He's really good at defense adjustments. He adjusts differently. He has very, very smart Madden player, um, especially in certain situations. So like studying both of these guys. Drini's going to start out with the ball first, I believe. And um, Gabigol, in my opinion, you could make a legitimate argument. He might be the best offensive player in Madden. He's very, very good. Uh, he's probably he's definitely the most systematic, uh, systematic offensive player that I know of. Um, he's kind of similar to Wesley in that. Wesley is very systematic as well. I think Wesley offensively is very good. But both of those players, Achilles heel really is their defense. And most importantly, their user defender. So uh, if you watch Gabigol's user, you will see kind of the biggest weakness that he has. Uh, here we got a little backed off slot corner on the left. And Gabigol uh, is a very specific defensive player as well. So he kind of goes with um, kind of a, a Mabel coverage to start out. Now, Drini's in the Jets playbook on offense and I believe he is in either the Patriots or the Baltimore playbook on defense he's going to be running nickel three through five odd actually a lot of people have been asking me questions about that we're going to be breaking down that defense in this video as well uh, but we, again a lot of freestyle route combinations like where do you see people motioning this tight end over don't see that a lot um, you know and, and his just his route combos are just different and not bad uh, it, not bad just different right Going to go to base here on fourth and one, able to sneak in, pick it up. That was close to being a stop. But Gabigol, I feel like just this game, as I watch him back, he, um, he, 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 he just seemed like, especially defensively, almost like not necessarily a step behind would be the right word, but he's just kind of like, uh, I don't know if, I don't think nervous is the right word either. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think he was just trying so hard to get a stop in a game where it's hard to get stops. And um, anyway, we're going to see this double corner. I actually love this. I want to break this. Eh, I can't really do it because he's not going to throw it. We'll show it if it comes up again. The play flood out of uh, the, the the Jets bunch strong offset. Hear me say this loud and clear. I have an ebook on this on my Patreon. I went super in depth in that ebook. The Jets, but and I'm going to update it. I'm going to be updating it uh, this week for you guys as well because there are some new things I'm doing, especially in the red zone. This formation, in my opinion, is the best formation in the game. It's the hardest formation to consistently stop. The Jets' formation is better than the Colts because it has more plays that attack more parts of the field. On offense, if you want to know what makes a good offense in Madden, really one of the most important things that you can have is you know having an offense that attacks every part of the field. A formation, really, that has routes that attack the entirety of the field. It's why when we get hot route master late in the year, all of a sudden a lot more offense becomes relevant. You can run things like trips or tight, um, but bunch through and through, whether it's bunch offset or bunch strong offset this year, or even bunch X nasty, they, they require the fewest amount of route apprentices. Now here, this is a crazy dot. You should throw the C route. Yeah. Um, that's the play inside cross. It was like, when do you see someone motion over the tight end on a streak? And 
It's just some of the stuff Drini does is just so unique. Now, I'm definitely locking in on his red zone in this game because I run Jets right now, mainly for Bunch Strong Offset. I do like some of the other formations in the Jets playbook. I just feel like uh, that you should you should be in Bunch Strong Offset 90% of the game. Goes to this little halfback dive. Gabagol able to blow it up. Now, Gabagol should be in Chiefs on defense, and you should probably see 6-1, I would assume. Again, Gabigol very systematic. Was that three? He might be in three three five wide. Actually, he might be in three three five wide. A lot of these games really he is in three three five wide or three three cub or whatever you want to call it. Let's see this Rundy. This is not bad. I, I just mm, nickel corner on the strong side. Right off get. Oh my gosh. Woo. Okay. Let's uh let's re rewind the tape on that. Now, the one weakness of the Jets playbook, in my opinion, is in the red zone. This is just, I mean, gosh, these guys are dropping out in the zone. He's only sitting four. Wow. All right. Uh, the weakness of the Jets is the red zone. Now, the player that I actually am going to do some film on, and really, he, I feel like he played pretty bad in the Madden Bowl. Um, he played really good all year long. But TJ, TJ ran Jets all year. He ends up switching to Bears for the Madden Bowl. And his offense, really, in my opinion, just was not as effective as it had been throughout the other tournaments that we saw from TJ this year. Smash return. Going to go to a slant route again. What I like in this, okay, go to flat. Tight end slant. Tight end slant route here from Drini. Let's see what this does. Tight end slants open. Smash return open. Okay, Gabigol's got to be feeling good. He holds Drini. He holds Drini uh, to three on his first drive. And now we will uh, – let's see if we can get up and take a look at Gabigol offensively. This is really where – this is where you're going to see most of the strengths here. Uh, Gabigol offensively is incredible. Drini defensively incredible. So this is where the game is going to really become very interesting. Right here, I'm not sure. What does Gabigol call here? This is tight way off. So Gabigol's in the Colts playbook. Okay, this is tight doubles. This is an interesting little wrinkle. Now, what's funny is Drini actually ran tight doubles. So we get this corner out. Uh, Drini is going to go DB fire. The reason a lot of players in this tournament are – was that DB fire? It kind of looks like DB fire, but I don't think it was. Is he in 35 odd? Oh, no, we're on the – why does Drini have the ball? I must have fast-forwarded too quick. My bad, guys. I was like, why does Drini have the ball? Let's back this up. And I was like, why is he going to tight doubles? <laughs> that's in that's in Jets. All right. So this was first drive. Drini, or no, no, no. What? The, the, did I just miss? I literally missed in Gabigol's entire first drive. We'll back this up. All right. Here we go. There we go. There he is. There's Gabigol. I wish I don't know why they haven't cut these games up. I might do that for you guys just so that I can watch the games because it's really annoying having to go through this whole broadcast trying to get to the film for you. So I might cut that up for myself and uh, actually post them on my channel. I don't know. So, all right, here we go. Finally. Okay, we get to the gameplay. Okay, so uh, Gabigol is in Colts. What is, uh, what is the best route combo coming into this tournament in Colts? It's really this play out of dagger because you can block your running back and still have a good combo. It's kind of similar to smash return, uh, but basically that's like a tight end drag route from smash return. This would be that slot post or that slot crosser. This fade is such a good, such a powerful route. And then this tight end is going to be kind of like that little return route where it's going to be attacking really this middle space. Now I would call this a cross concept because it kind of attacks these same uh, – it kind of attacks in the same way as like Y cross from the air raid. So this is what I would call this. Uh, Drini is in 3 5 odds. So 3 5 odd, haven't seen it much this year. But basically this guy is going to be blitzing through this A-gap. And Gabigol uh, actually knew that Drini was going to be in 3 through 5 odd and was fully prepared for this. So let's take a look. So off rip here, he actually gets a crazy blitz. Um it's actually a really good pressure. The running back's over here, so it's going to be hard for him to get over here. Uh, from a coverage perspective, pretty basic coverage off rip. Uh, oh, and this uh, – okay, so he contains this guy when he blitzes him. That's good to know. 
and you see that when the running back's blocked, that contain kind of uh, flails out like that. Now we get basically a cloud, a half. This might even be cover three cloud, but I think it's cover two. And then we get this combination with the user in the middle. He's going to basically have to choose between R1 and the tight end. So right now, Gabagol, this is what's really cool, uh, in my opinion, when you can really start to understand the reads. So he probably peeks this off rip, but he, he peeks this, and then immediately he sees this guy's over here, which basically, and the user's in the middle field, which basically tells him the coverage. So his next progression that he probably wants to hit is this guy. He could hit him right here, but he cannot hit him over here. So that window is dead. The next window he's looking is here where the user is, and he sees, okay, now I'm going to basically watch the user. If the user takes the crosser, then I'm going to throw this in route. If the user comes back to the in route, then there's no one here to defend the crosser. So it really becomes a simple, like, I peeked here, I saw that. I know that this is a flat, and it's trying to get over into this window. I see a defender there. That's dead. That's dead. So now where's the space? Where's the open space on the field? The open space on the field is right here. And then if the user runs to that space, the open space will now become right here. So you really can, um, if you think through your route combinations, you can get through these progressions really quickly. So you see here, again, what's he trying to throw? Now, at this point right here, the user's kind of committed to this the, the slot cross. So really, tight end's open now. I would hit him. Let's see if Gabgo actually waits on it. And he believes Drini's just a step too far behind, and he hits the crosser and uh, is able to attack well. Another thing that I think is really interesting, this should be double corner right here. Uh, we'll see if it is. I could be wrong. I should I should write these plays down. Yeah, double corner. Okay, I want to go over why he calls this. So, again, this is a standard route combination, uh, and I want to explain, though, what it does, and, and this is really um, a key point. So he just ran dagger, right? So where did he attack with dagger? I'll just put the X's. He attacked here, 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 and then here, right? So he really, if you think about it, let's split the field in half for a second. Gabagol attacked left with the play dagger, okay? Now he's on the left hash. Where's the most amount of space on the field? To the right. So now he's going to attack to the right. What is this? What do we get here? We get a clear out, which attacks really in this, in this little spot, right in these little pockets. We get this little backside in, which is really going to be meant to be thrown about right here. It can be thrown all the way over in these spots, but it's really in, in one of these like little pockets here. Then we have this deep corner, which can be thrown deep on the sideline. And we have a tight end apprentice short corner. This is out of mesh flat spot, and this can be thrown on the sideline. Now, what are the reads on this play? Okay, well, we're probably looking at this guy off rip and we're going to say, okay, if this guy bails, let's say he goes that way, right? And let's say the user goes down. Now there's a massive window here where we can throw. So he might peak this. If they bust a coverage, you always want to peak your streak. So he's probably, he's probably really looking like right here about this space to see if the defender vacates that area. If not, his eyes are immediately going here because the main concept is this that's the main concept right this is more of a hot read so if you get blitz 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 then this is open here so he's probably going to peak really these two quick reads and then his eyes are probably going to work back over here now how do we read this right side concept well this is probably the user now we know in here it's going to be here but in general Gabigol's probably anticipating this being the user, uh, okay? He might actually have identifier, but anyways. The big point here is this defender can never defend the short corner route. It doesn't matter. He has to be backed off. So the only thing that could defend a short corner is this outside corner on a cloud. But if he's on a cloud, guess what's going to be open? The deep corner route, right? So what Gabigol is looking for is we're really starting to key in on this. Once we get through kind of our little initial, can we hit that space? Can we hit that space? We're going to work our eyes to the primary concept and say, okay, does the user go right? If the user stays in the middle of the field, we're going to work this high, low stress on the slot corner or on this outside corner. If the corner goes to the deep corner, we're going to throw the short corner. If the corner 
sits down on the short corner, then we're going to throw the deep corner out. Okay. That's again, this will help speed up your progressions when you actually have, I'm looking for this specifically at this time. It really helps a lot. It's helped me a lot too. So we see what he's looking for here. So off rip, this defender's in a third. So we know automatically, again, this is, this is going to happen like that, right? It's going to be look, no, look, no, look, no, right? One, two, three, boom. So the ball is snapped. Okay. The ball is snapped. And then we are looking at that safety. So what we see here, and I'll try to, I'll try to literally time it up. Okay. Right now we look, we see, okay, he's in his own. That's completely dead. Now, what I would look at here is I would be looking here because I, it allows me to see the pressure, right? It allows me to see the pressure. And this is really my hot read, right? So I see that's dead. Now I'm looking into my space. I see he's sending at least three, four, maybe five, depending on what this guy does. So the next thing is I blocked my running back. And now I see this guy is squatting in the middle of the field. So I, this is now dead to me as well. Obviously, the user's over here. So within like half a second, I know I have to look over here, right? My eyes have peaked here, check the hot and the pressure. And now I'm looking over here to this space to see what's going on with the primary concept side. Again, good play call because we just attacked left. Now we're attacking to the right. And what you'll see here, okay, what is the corner doing? The corner is bailing on a third. We know that this zone cannot get the depth required, and we're going to throw this ball right in that little uh, space. That's what I would assume he does. He does throw it, catch it, perfect dot. That was awesome. That was, I mean, that is, that is, that is a huge breakdown on passing. If you can do that every single time, it's hard to stop you, Okay. Okay, so let's see what he calls next. So he attacked to the right side. He attacked to the left side. Now here he's going to go ahead and just take to the quarter. And Gabigol is basically running this with his bunch to the right. And he has short side and wide side setups. Here's a pass protection, a little double team. ID the D tackle. And we're looking for the C right on the left. So now where's he did? And this again, this is so important. Um, so he goes to this double post setup, Okay. Again, you learn so much in the first drive. How has Gabigol been calling plays? Well, really, he's just kind of been going left, right, left, right, right, based off of where the ball is at. So this is a short side bunch setup. So my bunch is to the short side. What he's got is he's got his tight end and pass pro. It might be a delay drag, but the tight end is in some type of pass pro. We have this double post C route. We have this wheel. So what that? what is that combo, really? If we look at this for what it is, what is this? This is what I would call a Y sale concept or just a flood concept because this is going, this guy is going to become, the, it's a switch sale because this guy is now going to become the streak. This guy is now going to become the corner. And then this guy is going to become the flat, right? But it's basically streak corner flat. So his hot read is probably this right here. He sees this. You can throw this, but. He's also got the blitz picked up well. So now uh, where I would be looking here is he sees, okay, hot read. Now I want to identify where the user is. And his main concept is really that to the drag and then this to hold the user in the middle of the field. So he might peak this space as he's kind of working back because the, the double post at this point right now, we know that the at this point right now, we know the C route is open if we have time to hit it. So he waits, throws it, perfect dot, and again, he attacked to the left side. Now we're getting closer to the red zone, and so whenever the, whenever the, the space on the field begins to constrain, they're going to start doing stuff like little RPOs, little RPO pop pass. He actually ran it. He had the RPO, but ends up running it. And that's going to bring up second and 13 uh, with the ball on the left hash. And let's see if this is, this will probably be a passing play. And let's see what he's cooking up here. A little short side. He's got this deep fade for cover two. He's got that open. Throws it. Should have been. And uh, because of Drini's user, he had to force it. So this combo, real quick, I think on the right it was a C route. Um, they're loving these uh, Colts players are loving these deep uh, little street corner on one side, wheel C route on the other side when we're in the red zone, uh, kind of what they like to do. He's going to go to trips here. 
And this is a pretty standard combo from Trips. And let's see. I actually bagged up. And that's going to be a field goal. All right. So Drini doesn't recover the fumble there. We're finally caught up. And now he holds to three. So now Drini gets the ball on his next drive. We'll back it up just a smidge here. Hopefully. Hopefully that'll be all we need to do. Perfect. We're back. All right. So uh, Drini's in, again, Drini is in uh, Jets. So he goes street corner flat to the left. And that's just a high low. He's just high low in the corner on the left side. He sees the corner goes to the corner corner route so he throws the running back route and it's a quick read the if you can make fast reads that is really i think the hardest skill to teach and the hardest skill to master in madden is understanding not just what routes to put on the field why to put those routes on the field and then also what progression of which or how to read the defense um is is just super hard it's super hard uh it's something that i think is really hard to articulate and it's also something that nobody – I have yet to see a Madden player, myself included, that does this perfectly, okay? It's the hard – that's why I say it's the hardest skill to master. Like right there, that was a bad read. Maybe you thought he could juke him out, but that was a bad read. There's a defender in that space. You've got to hand that ball off. So it's just stuff like that that – it just and it takes so long to – it doesn't take long to master it, but it takes so much intentional effort. You have to work – it's a skill you have to train for, uh, which is something that most people don't like to talk about or do. All right, so we were going to play Durham. Love this combo. And we got the running back. Throws to R1 because the user kind of drifts to the running back. Good read. And now we got first and 10. So Drini goes with Durham. I would love to. I, I was surprised how little we saw Durham called this game or in this tournament. Because the previous tournament, Durham was called the majority of the tournament. So I'm kind of surprised. Maybe just because of more KOs. But anywho, tight doubles. Drini loves this tight doubles. He's ran this since the beginning of the year, this tight doubles. I'm pretty sure he will get out there with Pacheco. Drini's pretty much been in tight doubles for at least the last two years. He might have been in tight flex at one point, though, out of the Rams playbook, too. Drini's always in something. RPO. So, look, we're keying here. Does this guy – this is what I do when I read this. I look at that. I look at that slot. That is crazy. And Gabigol's like, I, didn't, I don't know that Gabigol expected this. Look, at that's kind of a crazy dot because the user has to go down to guard the running back. Now, Drini didn't catch it, but that's kind of a – when you motion blocked receivers on bubble screens, they become hitch routes, and you can actually throw them. And he's, he might, he's going to go back to that C route combo. No, he's going to go to a trail uh, out of vertical. See, these, these route combos are just – you don't – where are you going to see that? Throws the ball off the guy's head. Third and 10. That's the one vulnerability to set feet lead is the ball travels at a low trajectory. And sometimes stuff like that happens or sometimes like it can route that you think would get over a zone, doesn't, stuff like that. Okay, third and 10 goes to flood. Love this. Oh, <laughs> throws that. All right, nice, nice. I want to talk about the flood play, but they haven't really given me a reason to talk about it. The flood play is one of those plays Again, a hard it's a hard route to throw, but if you can learn how to throw that tight end corner, or even if you put a slot apprentice corner out there, it's super, super good. So here's a little red zone combo. I don't know what he's really looking for. Bad animation, bad freeform, whatever. Out of tight doubles. And let's see here. Now, uh, this is kind of the red zone D. We're going to 3-3 three, three Cub, which is interesting. Uh, you really haven't seen that a lot. And I think he's that, that pretty much tells you that he's in multiple defensive playbook. A lot of people in this tournament, there's really two playbooks you should be running defensively. I run multiple defense, but you can run Chiefs, which will give you 6-1, or you can run uh, multiple defense, which will give you 3-3 three, three Cub and 3-4 Odd. That's a cool combo right there. Hit that tight end. Oh, and um, you see these windows. I mean, they're not like... You got to give Drini credit. Like, he just finds a way offensively, man. He just – it's it's hard to even – I don't know that he could explain it. Like, it's just freestyle, man. It, it just it is so – it's just so different from the way most people play the game. Smash return. This is one of my favorite plays in Madden. Oh, that's such a good play. So that's um, 
And again, to me, Smash Return, that concept would be like a Y cross. It's very similar to Dagger. He might even go to Dagger here. So again, ball and left hash. Where's he going to attack? It appears like, okay, this is a different route combo. Okay, okay. And he gets a fumble. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Man, that's terrible. Oh, and he's out of there too. Oh, Drini. Drini's out of there. And now we're in 17-3 ball game. Gabigol dots him up. And, oh, that's terrible. That's terrible for Gab. Gabigol, man, he's a tough player. You you see, like, at this level, every game is tough. You know, you're playing Gabigol, Drini, and then you're playing Drini, Henry. Like, those are tough games. Um, Astro, Kobo. Astro, a lot of people would say he's, he's probably the best player with – I mean, he's one of the best players, if not the best player that has not won a belt yet. I mean, he is an incredible player. So, anyway – Pretty much everyone at this level is good. I'm going to take a look at Astro. We're going to do him next in the film room because, I I mean, if you if you want to learn some offense, Astro, <laughs> Astro has figured stuff out. Uh, he is the probably – Gabigol, between Gabigol and Astro, I think they're just two of the best offensive minds to study. Okay, he's going to wide trail. This is the bomb play. This is open, and we're not going to throw it. Now, Gabigol actually uh, – good user by Drini. Gabigol actually had a uh, crazy bomb, if I remember correctly, at the end of this. Uh, maybe. I don't know if it's at the end of this drive or if it was at the end of half. I know it was in the end of half. Okay, so this is w interesting combo. Okay, this is a short side combo. You don't see a lot of people. Is this a spike here? You got a spike here, right? Yep. Okay, so he's got seven seconds. Really want time for one play. And he's going to come out. And if you take a look at this, he's going to come out in this cross screen. And he flips it. So his fade is on the short side of the field. I'm not even sure. He streaks the tight end, which you can do if you hot route it instantly. And Drini just runs bad defense. Like, look at Gab. <laughs> That's crazy. Are they going to replay that? Give us a replay. Come on. Come on, EA. Give us a replay. No replay? All right, it's a crazy dot. He actually he actually gets him again on that too. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here's replay. Okay, so it's a rollout play. So he double teams this guy right here, but basically you have to hot route this tight end as soon as you as soon as you call the play. So you hot route the tight end. It gives you a streak. I just don't know what in the world. It's hard to even look at this. Like, what's the coverage during he's in? This is a deep half. And I don't know why. I don't know why he wants a deep half there. But, I mean, look at the deep half. So, on the short side of the field, if you have one of these stock fades and you pair it with a streak, the deep half will suction to the streak because the streak is inside the numbers, which is in the grid of the deep half. So, it leaves this fade to fade outside of the numbers and there's this little window you can hit it, and and Drini just gives it up. It's just kind of a. I don't know why you call that. I don't know why you call that defense right there. I just don't. I mean, mm, interesting. Everybody's bowing down to Gab, King Gab. All right, so seventeen ten. Now Gabigo does get ball at half, so he's not in a like. The fumble for six is honestly really unfortunate, especially for how uh, good Gabigol has looked offensively. But he's not dead by any means. He's get ball to half. He goes down, ties this up, and we've got a big time game. Now, now Gabigol is not a great defensive player, so um, he's. I mean, you can count the stops Gabigol has gotten in MCS, Mag Madden, like live events. You can probably count the stops he's gotten on one hand. He just doesn't get a lot of stops. Um, he holds to three a lot, I'm pretty sure, actually, though. Or at least that's that's where he kind of hangs his hat, is, is really trying just to play Bimba, don't break defense, hold to three. Goes to dagger. We're going to attack to the right side here. There's the tight end. That's just such – oh, man, I mean, I feel terrible for Gab because watching this back, I'm like, you are literally – I mean, it's just his – his his combos and his routes they're just it's always almost always open i mean this is just i mean it's look how open that is 
I mean, he's throwing wide open players every single play. And we and, and as good as 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 good as a lot of the players in this live event stage are, I don't know that you can say that about everybody else. I mean, I think Gabigol literally his offense is just whew, it's just clean. He plays clean. Um, Got to respect that about Gabigol. Tied in. Okay, so this is a short side combo. A lot of people don't know this. Uh, I did want to break this this one specific route combo down. This was actually how Wesley scored against Henry in the Madden uh, in the Madden Bowl final. So. When uh, so please under so please take note that the ball is on the short side of the field. When the ball is on the short side of the field like this, we know that the basic coverage shell most people like is either this guy going in a middle third or this guy going into a middle third, right? So what happens is this crosser because there's more room for him in the middle of the field to work, he's going to hold that middle third, and because this tight end wheels up like basically just slightly outside the numbers the middle third never really engages with him or it doesn't get over fast enough. It's hard for him to play that. So this outside wheel will take the outside third and the tight end is going to be wide open in the seam. And it's actually a really good short side. And, and you, they do get bumped here. Drini might have halved that guy. If Drini halved that corner, then he might have got a KO there had they not bumped. But all in all, now we've got a 17-17 to 17 ball game. I mean, this is um, – not out of reach at all for Gabigol. He's not in a terrible spot anymore. Obviously, he should. I mean, it, assuming he scores on that drive where he got that fumble, probably should be up 24-17. Uh, but obviously, the entirety of the game shifts whenever a fumble like that happens. So, let's see what Drini does. And again, Drini just calls stuff that's like almost hard to break down because you just don't – like we got a little zig, a little angle route. Like it's just – there's a KO. Notice he ags back to those crossers. That's another thing that I think is creates some skill gap is just avoiding the KOs. All right, here we go. Finally, we can break. The, oh, he mans that up again. Dang it. Every time he runs that play, he mans up that outside fade. If you don't press the, press man up that fade, the cool part about that play is that fade will clear out any outside third on the wide side of the field. So it gives your corner out. More room to get open. Now, nice little quick base call. And if you ever, like, if you've actually studied any, any of Drini's games and, and really watch how he wins games, again, it's just his situational awareness is super good. His ability to just, for lack of a better word, just like um, man, man, manipulate or matric, whatever that word is, matriculate. Like, he just kind of finds a way to get down the field. And it's never like – it's not that he's bad on offense. It's that you just never see stuff like this. And it, it almost, as you watch it, you're like, have you actually practiced this play before you ran it? Like, it's it appears freestyle-ish, right? So Z-spot, corners open. That's why tight doubles to me is just not – I don't know. They just run into each other so bad in, in tight doubles this year on stuff like that. Like, that's got to be open, but it wasn't because of the – uh, because of the bump, so here a little tight doubles, quick base, looking for, looking for Gabigol just to try to give him a touchdown. Honestly, yep, base gets a block, gets up field, and that's gonna bring up a second and goal situation. Let's see what he does here. Down here, once you get to about the ten yard line, it's really hard to pass, and so what people do is they just try to kind of, again, just try to find runs. Double teaming this guy, trying to get up, able to juke a guy. I mean, that's awesome. There you go. There it is. Touchdown. Audible to whatever formation that was and run the inside zone. I think that was tight offset, actually. That could have been anything, though. I mean, honestly. They literally lab, uh, pros lab run plays for the meta defenses they know they're going to face. And what's also interesting about that is they oftentimes don't work. <laughs> They oftentimes don't work that well either. All right, so Gab go back on offense here. First and 10. Ball's on the short side, and he's going to go to this combo. This is another one of his short side plays out of dagger. It's a little different, but basically what he's doing is he's – that was actually the play he fumbled on. He's putting that that uh, solo on a crosser, which you don't see very much because it's short side, so the streak would actually clear that out. And then it's the same, and then you're just quick hiking it. 
here double corner trying to attack that right sideline perfect awesome i mean dude he literally has he has he thrown how many incompletions has he actually thrown let's back this down just a hair so we can see that i mean it, it he is putting on a clinic on offense he really is all right first and 10 we're going to the fourth here i don't know Oh, actually, really smart there. He took the time to try to save time. Had the, had the, oh, I didn't know that happened. I forgot about that. You got to give Drini some credit. So uh, let's talk about the blitz. We haven't really talked about the defense too much. So this is the best part of the defense is the blitzing part. Okay, the coverage is not as good as you can get from dollars. Why I personally believe dollars still better. But the blitz is good. So what you get here. Is you get this a gap, but here's the key: to block this blitz, you have to block your running back. Okay, we know that in next gen Madden, if you contain this guy's on a contain, right? A lot of times he can actually loop around the running back. Not a lot of times, but but in general, there is potential on next gen for this running back to come over here and for him to loop around uh, the run or the the running back and actually sack the quarterback. So we see here, and I honestly think Gabagol would go to this play, uh, I mean, just, mm, I just, I don't love him even putting himself in that situation, but here we see, okay, we get a blitz, 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 right? And then we have this guy coming free. So the running back has to choose who's he going to block, right? Well, he's going to block this guy, the immediate threat. So it allows this contain, and actually, it's not terrible pass protection. Somehow he got that guy blocked up, but see here, the loop around, Running back does not block him. Gabagol is probably trying to throw the flat route that's standing wide open. Is a step too late. And what's uh, if you guys know this, this is another thing. Gabagol uh, actually is probably one of the most knowledgeable players on quarterback releases. The reason Gabagol did not like C.J. Stroud was because C.J. Stroud had a hitch when throwing the flat route to the right side of the screen. Ironically, the D-line pick six comes on him throwing a flat route to the right side of the screen. Okay, Drini finally completes this, so I'm super excited to break this play down. We haven't talked about this play in any of the breakdowns. Okay, so this play is flood out of a uh, bunch strong offset. And the ball is kind of in the middle of the field. It's a little more left than it should be uh, to really understand here. But this is not a straight streak, okay? This, this guy's lined up here. And he is on what we know as like a kind of a fade. And that's a little too sharp, but it's like he'll kind of fade or flail out to the outside, right? Well, if this guy's an outside third, he has to take that throw away. And so what it does is those deep corner routes can actually be thrown super late into the progression right in that little window. And you see him throw it right here. Even though it's a KO, see how the KO lights up? Kelsey drops the ball, but because he's on the sideline, this game will give you the catch animation. So it makes it a super powerful route because, again, why do these players play so heavy to the sidelines? Because then it's harder to, for the user. The user has to commit to the sideline, which then opens up the backside in routes and stuff like that. Should be just a standard flood concept, street corner flat, short corner here from Drini. He's kind of audible and around, audible and around, all that much to say. Going to go back to the base. Good route or good run. And uh, Gabagol, <laughs> oh, it's just really unfortunate for him in getting that D-line pick six and a fumble. D-line, or not D-line pick six, but a fumble for six and a D-line pick. And really not... I mean, like, like I said, I mean, you got to, you got to kind of, you could blame the game or you could blame the fact that you didn't throw the flat route fast enough. I don't know. You know, there's King Henry at this point, he would play the, go on to play the winner of this game. We actually did a breakdown on that game on the channel. Let's see what happens here. So street corner flat. I don't even know what that route, like, what is that play? That's deep corner. He goes to deep corner out of a bunch out of Jets. Running back Texas are out. Why wouldn't you? Dreamy loves those little running back angle routes. Get seven. Gabigol kind of played, in my opinion, fairly bad defense. Like the cloud. 
I don't know. I don't know how that corner route got open that that wide open in that situation. And now it's thirty one seventeen. With four minutes. Yeah, he played a hard flat. Okay, he was maybe trying to bait him into throwing the flat round. I don't know. You can't uh I don't know. I feel like that's honestly bad defense. Gabagool's definitely not <laughs> the guy to look for on defense. I don't know. He knows a lot about the game, but like why would you – I just don't know why you'd call a hard flat right there. Like, if you play a cloud, at least you give yourself a chance. I don't know. Love that route combo. That's the that's the bunch nasty equivalent of Durham. We just – instead of using the wheel route, they use the flat route out of this guy right here. Um, here he's going to white trail again. Blocks him. Has it. And he threw it. See, this time he threw it early enough to not get a D-line pick. <laughs> All right, goes to trips. Let's see if he's going to go to that same combo he went to. No, he's going to go to C route, streak. What's also kind of interesting is, oh, that's terrible. Intentional. Man. Yeah, I feel like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Number one, why do you go to trips? You're just, I feel like Gabagol, man. Ah, just like watching this back, I just feel like, mm, really in the second half, it kind of comes down to two plays where it just seems like Gabigol is trying to force something instead of just trusting his system. I don't know. I could be wrong on that. I mean, it, it, it got unfortunate for sure. Like, this, these combos, though, that he has, like, Drini's not stopped one of them. So why go to Trips tight end and run just, like, the most random – I just don't understand it. And you see this happen, like – these pro players, they know so much about the game, and I feel like what happens at times, and I I mean, I've done this myself. If you guys want to see me do this, go watch my game against Young Kib on the channel because that's exactly how I lost the game, was you kind of just start doing stuff that you just normally wouldn't do. That is a laser. That is an absolute laser. So this is a play a lot of trips players like, like to run. And Drini, I'm not sure. Yeah, this is a third. So this is a quarter or a third. It's probably a quarter. But why this is so good is because this streak will clear out the middle third. The tight end corner has a chance to kind of pull this zone here, leaving this massive space for this crosser to actually get over the top and kind of be like a cover three beater. You see, see how that third, see that? See how he's kind of sitting on the tight end? The user has to take the running back. As soon as this guy crosses, Gabigol's anticipating that throw. And boom, touchdown. Ah, oh, Lee, man. Let's see if he gets an onside kick. Is he going to go onside here? No, he kicks it deep. I thought he went onside kick here. Maybe he does later in the game. So two minutes left. And really, Drini is kind of in a... Just get a first down clock type situation uh, with the two-minute warning being there. He's probably going to throw it. He does. He goes to deep corner, that short corner out a bunch. Nice throw right as he's getting sacked. You know, tough throw, tough read, tough read. First and 10, trips tied in, RPO screen. Should just run this ball to get it to the two-minute. Throws a screen pass. Nice, nice. Puts him up. That's mm, there you go. <laughs> there you go. All right, thirty-one twenty-four. So Drini's in field goal range. The game's basically chalked at this point. It's gonna be hard for Gabigol to win this, and Gabigol is gonna have to start calling his timeout. So Drini should just be in full clock mode here. Honestly, probably should not even should not even attempt to pass because you you can you're gonna make Gabigol take some time, force him to take an onside kick. And really, three points puts you up two possessions. And there, I mean, he almost gets the first down. Third and four, Gabigol's got to have it. He's in dollar against a single or ace personnel set. Going to get an RPO inside zone. Dream's going to motion the whole team over. And Gabigol is going to get the stop here. Nice. So Dream takes three. So Drini takes three, still in a good spot. He was able to take Gabigol's timeouts away. Again, Drini situationally very rarely makes situational mistake. 
Here you're actually showing Junie's defense. I didn't know they showed Junie's defense. Let's take a look at this. So is he basing out of – okay, so here's his coverage adjustments while we're at it. So this is, this is probably his base defense here. So this is cover three cloud. Why would he call it like this? Well, and this is a half here, kind of interesting. Uh, what's the purpose of the deep half? It's really for double post, honestly. But this is probably going to be a cloud. He probably has a package on that allows him to third both of these guys. But again here, the beauty of cover three cloud is really the blitz angles. And then we contain here, and we send this guy right through the A-gap. So, yeah, 335 odd ebook. There you go. Hope those of you that hung around late into the video, you've got a little gem here. So you see. And then Gabigol, double post. So Gabigol has to score here. Um, he has to score in the least amount of time possible, so he's going to be playing heavy, heavy to the sideline. So he's going to be trying to throw the ball to the sideline as much as possible. It's probably that uh, actually interesting combo. Gets screamed at. Oh, my gosh. Didn't love that one. Didn't love that one. Again, this is interesting to watch this game. So uh, let's see if he – does he kick here? Or does he take three shots to the end zone? I don't know. I mm, You need an onside kick no matter what. I kind of feel like you kick here. I don't know. Okay, so he goes back to that trip stat in play where he um, got bagged on. And, again, it just doesn't – didn't look good. I mean, I guess he's looking for the C route, but – to me, those, those, that play was snapped twice in trips and really didn't look that good. Going back to that wide trail play, has the flat. He's had the flat every time. Rolls out. It's out of bounds. Fourth and one. And now he takes three. <laughs> okay. There you go. That's why I say I think you just, when you get in field goal range in that situation, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever, 47 seconds doesn't really matter. Situation's kind of similar. He needs an onside kick. Goes with a normal kick, which these are not very – oh, my. He got it? Gab. He knows something about the onsides. That's crazy. He got the onside kick. Kind of due for that. So, now he's in a situation where he can go tie the game. Goes to Dagger. Boom, boom. Drini, good user. Great user from Drini right there. Great user from Drini. He was able to, he was able to really cover three routes. Really nice. All right, second and four. Again, we basically saw Drini's adjustments, and he, Drini's pretty much going to do that all game, uh, from what I've seen. It's kind of standard coverage. Upfield. Boom. Now we're in field goal range. Doesn't matter. We need seven. So first down and ten. Spikes it. Good. Now we got about twenty seconds. So I mean, you have time here. So he goes to the cross screen in this situation. And that's a deep half again. Oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. He had it again. That's crazy. The dream. I don't know why Dreamy's putting deep halves on the field. He must know something I don't because I would never put a deep half on the short side of the field. Like. Unless I'm playing against Bunch. Offset, not Bunch Strong Nasty. Kind of an interesting decision there. That route combo was terrible. Oh, he got an intentional. So he snapped trips tight in four times. Uh, I think five times he got a touchdown, two intentional groundings, and two basically throwaways. Yeah. Fourth of 23. Here we go. Ten seconds. What's he call? Does he dot him up? Goes just straight up Hail Mary. Streaks to running back out. Why wouldn't you? Little out route here. I don't know what that's going to pull. Tight end. Nah, it's not open. All right, GG's. Boys, thanks for watching the gameplay. If you guys want to get my, my ebooks, any of that stuff to get better at the game, join the Patreon. 10 bucks. Link is in the description. Get you access to all of my offensive and defensive ebooks as well as all of our updates. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.